Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now it's Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, just around the corner. So I thought I'd share the recipe for my traditional honey cake, but with an apple twist. So this is the first time I'm going to be trying this technique out. So firstly, I hope it works. And secondly, I hope you enjoy it and try it out yourself. For the honey cake base is actually a really simple recipe and funnily enough, there's actually no honey involved. We're actually going to use a base of golden syrup, but I will get to that when I start using it. To start in my bowl, I've got plain flour with a little bit of baking powder and into the flour, I'm going to go in with my sugar. Now, obviously being a honey cake, it is quite a sweet cake, but because of the extra spices going in, it really balances out. In goes some bicarbonate of soda and some mixed spices. So I've got some cinnamon, ginger and ground nutmeg in here. And just with a whisk, I'm going to mix this up all together so all the dry ingredients are nicely combined. Using a whisk also really helps break down those flour lumps, which then helps the wet ingredients mix in a little bit better. And I'm just going to place this to the side. Now for the wet ingredients. Like I mentioned, this cake has actually got a golden syrup base. So in here I've got my golden syrup and I'm going to add my oil. Make sure this is a flavorless oil without any strong flavors such as olive oil or coconut. So I'm using canola and in goes some water. What I'm gonna do now is heat this in the microwave for two minutes to get it really nice and hot. Whilst the golden syrup, oil and water is heating, I'm going to break up the eggs. Now this is really important, this step. Not only does it help the eggs mix in a lot easier, but because we're heating up the other ingredients, if you put in whole eggs directly into the heat, they can start cooking and breaking them up just helps prevent that a little bit. So now this wet mixture is nice and hot. So side note, obviously be careful, especially the sugar can get quite hot at this point. And now it's time to incorporate the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. So what I'm going to do first is add the warmed golden syrup, oil and water into the flour bowl and start mixing that just to bring down the temperature before I go in with the eggs because I really don't want these eggs cooking in the heat. So just with a spatula, I'm gonna fold that through and now I can add the eggs. Start mixing that in. And because it's quite a wet mixture, I actually swapped the spatula for a whisk to help combine all the ingredients. The whisk really breaks down any powdery lumps. And after a couple of minutes of mixing, you get a really smooth batter. So obviously you definitely don't want any lumps in there because they will cook in lumps and you don't want lumps of flour in your cake. Now that is the honey cake base done. However, I'm gonna go the extra mile and create some apple roses. So this is where I'm going to incorporate apples. So I'm going to set the batter aside and prepare the apples. Now I've seen this been done before and I've really wanted to try it. And I was thinking of ways how to incorporate these apple roses in a honey cake. So I've chosen some juicy red apples here because I like the idea of keeping a red skin on the apple. So there's a little bit of contrast in the cake. And what I need to do is prepare them and cut them into thin slices, which is why I've got a mandolin. First, I'm going to cut the apples in half and take out the core to remove all the seeds and the stalk. And then with my mandolin, I'm going to get slicing. If you are using one of these, make sure you use that hand protector. You don't wanna be slicing your fingers at this point. You can do this by hand, but a mandolin just gets even thinner slices and also more consistent. And you can see how thinly sliced these apples are. So I'm going to repeat with both halves of the apple because I'm going to be using quite a lot. And then I'm going to keep them in a bowl of water because I don't want these apples going brown. And I'm also going to add some lemon juice because the acid from the lemon prevents the browning of the apples. You can actually see that some of the apple is already getting brown. That's how quickly apples turn. So this water really helps prevent that. Once all the apples are submerged in the water, I'm going to pop this bowl in the microwave for a couple of minutes because I just want to slightly soften the apples up before I get rolling them into roses. So now the apples have softened slightly, they're a little bit more flexible. Now I'm gonna start preparing the apple roses. What I'm going to do is line up about seven to eight slices of apples and they're slightly overlapping each other like this. I'm trying to drain as much water as possible because it can get a little bit messy and sticky at this point. So I'm just preparing myself three rows because this is definitely the lengthier part and then I can get rolling straight away. So to roll, I'm going to start at the end of that first apple slice and gently roll up the apples. And what happens is because the slices are overlapped, they start to roll into each other. And then hopefully when I pick it up, 
it creates this sort of rose pattern. Look how beautiful that is. And that is just rolled apple slices. Now I can really see the contrast with the red skin as well. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to repeat this rolling action for both of the other rows. And there I have my apple roses. Now I obviously want more of these, but my main concern was how these roses were gonna hold its shape in the cake. So I had an idea. What I have in the jug is a few tablespoons of the honey cake batter. And my idea is to actually bake a small amount of batter in a cupcake case with the rose on top. And then when the batter cooks, it will hold the rose shape and then I can add these to the cake. So for me, this is the only way I could imagine these apples holding their shape once I place them in the larger cake. And once I put the apples in the cupcake cases, I can sort of spread out the petals and make them more rose shape as well. So the cases actually really helped me with the rose shape. Now, I'll be honest, because this took a lot longer than anticipated, I actually swapped the larger cupcake cases for smaller cupcakes. So I've got three large ones, and then I did a few smaller apples with about six apple slices each and placed them in smaller cupcake cases. Once they were in the cases, I can also place other bits of apple slices in the very center of each rose to really get a tighter center. So once I was happy with the rose shapes of the apples and then took hold of that batter that I put aside in a jug and poured a little bit of batter over the roses into the cupcake cases. Now again, I wasn't sure if this was the right way round. I probably should have put the batter in the cupcake cases first and then the apples on top. But at this point, it was a little bit too late. So I was trying hard not to pour too much batter over the apple and kind of aimed to go in between the apple slices. It was definitely more helpful having the batter in a jug so I can control it more. Even though some of the batter did fall on top of the apple slices, it did eventually sink down to the bottom of the cases. So, so far, so good. And now I'm going to bake these cupcake apple roses. The smaller ones took about 10 minutes and the larger ones took about 15 minutes until that batter was cooked. And when they came out of the oven, they looked something like this. Now, what I found difficult is to know when the batter was cooked because in the oven, what was happening, the apples produced lots of liquid. So even though the batter was cooked, it was still quite wet. So there's that fine balance of knowing if it was still raw or just soaked from the apples. So what I've got here is a lined 20 centimeter square tin. So I've greased the bottom of the tin and placed some baking paper on top so the honey cake doesn't stick to it. Now I'm going to take my honey cake batter and pour it directly in the tin. And you can see just how liquidy this batter is. So it's really important to get yourself a good tin to cook this in. Because it's such a loose batter, I actually thought to put the tin on top of a tray just in case there were any spillage because this is actually a loose bottoms tin, even though it's quite tight. So now the moment of truth to see if these apple roses worked. So as I took the cupcake case off, half of the batter actually came off with the case, but the rose did hold its shape. So it did somehow work. Again, this was definitely an extra step and I'm sure there was an easier way around of doing this, but I was actually happy that the roses kept their shape. So my idea is to now place the roses on top of the batter. And as I was doing this, I was actually a bit worried because the batter is so thin, I was worried that the apple roses were just gonna sink, but they managed to float just on top of the surface. And as I placed them on, I spread the roses on top of the cake, so I've got a nice mixture of the larger and smaller apple roses. So I haven't even baked it yet, but I really liked the look of it. Once all the apples were on, it's time for the oven. Now this cake bakes at a very low temperature of 160 degrees Celsius without the fan. So if you do have a fan, put it on 150 because fan tends to be a little bit hotter. And then the tricky part is putting this in the oven without moving the apples around again, because it's such a loose batter. This cake cooks for a good hour, if anything, an hour and 15 minutes. So check after an hour and keep it in for a further five to ten minutes if it needs cooking longer so something quite surprising happened when i took this cake out of the oven all the apples ended up moving towards the center of the cake at first i was completely shocked but it kind of makes sense because in general the cakes start cooking from the outside because that's where the tin is so i guess in the oven during the cooking it moved the apples into the center of the cake i removed the tin from the tray and i'm glad i put the tray there because you can actually see a little bit of batter did seep out of the tin and i'd rather that batter be on that tray rather than my oven i left the tin for a few minutes and then i was able to handle it with a cloth and remove the cake from the tin now you can see this cake does get a little bit dark and that's because of the amount of sugar in 
it. So don't worry, you haven't burnt your cake if it does go this color. Because of the high content of sugar, it caramelizes more. Plus you've got those added spices in there as well. So regardless of the fact that the apples moved into the center, firstly, this cake smelt delicious. I can smell all those spices in there and the sweetness of the apples too. And I can feel how soft and moist it is as well. I transferred it onto a cooling rack and left it to cool before removing the paper completely. And then it was time to serve. As I cut into this cake, I can also feel how soft the sponge is as well, which means it's going to last a really long time. It's full of moisture, so this will be good for at least a week if kept in an airtight container. And just look at that caramelly honey cake, delicious goodness. It's so squidgy and full of flavor, and those apples give a really nice twist on it. So yes, it was a completely extra step, but I'm actually really happy with how it turned out, as surprising as it was, and it certainly tasted delicious too. So whether you decide to use the apple roses or not, try out this honey cake because you definitely won't regret it, whether it's Rosh Hashanah or not. And if you are celebrating, have a happy and sweet new year.